Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. I am sorry for the technical stuff, but hey, the show must go on, and we have our very special guest here. Would you like to say hi to everybody? Hi, everyone. I'm special. No, hi. <laughs> hi, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the one for the record books. I'll, I'll say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when, when you get a voice actor and, and let them loose, you, you got to, you know, just kind of sit back and let the insanity happen, right? Hey, that's the fun part. Oh, yeah, yeah, and uh, they've yet to catch me and put me into a padded room outside of a studio, yeah. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny, uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, I was on on the phone with tech support about trying to get the radio and all that fun stuff back up, and I was trying to explain why I needed a stable connection, like, I, I have an interview in, like, nine minutes, I, we gotta go here, and they're like, oh, an interview with who? Do you play video games? Do you play Street Fighter? And when I mentioned the name, they were like, what, really? Where do I tune in? Like, and they're at work. So I thought that was that was actually really cool because, you know, even though it's, it's some random person at a call center, you know, immediately as soon as you you say Street Fighter and Ryu, they're, they're like, wow. So I wanted to yeah. share that. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Excellent. <laughs> and you've actually not just been doing, you know, Street Fighter stuff lately. I, I know that you recently got to be a part of another sort of phenomenal series, uh, the Sonic series. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's trippy. I mean, games are recorded many months in advance, and of course, you know, they have us under gag order. But uh, <laughs> once the game comes out and it's out there in the world, then, you know, obviously I, I promote it on my site and on Twitter and on Facebook and say, hey, you know, if you pick up this game, you'll be able to hear me as uh, as Big the Cat in the DS version of Sonic Colors. And, uh, yeah, it's just yet another really cool, popular franchise that I, I feel very honored and flattered to be a part of. And that must be kind of interesting because the the whole vocal cast changed. So you've gotten to hear, you know, some of the the feedback from fans and perhaps negative feedback alike, uh, depending on who's saying it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when they approached me about auditions, they said you know, we're looking for voice matches, and you know, they attached some MP3s. So I kind of listened, and uh, obviously, I, I guess I got closest to Big the Cat in their ears. So. That's fine with me. Uh, you know, uh, I know he's not he's not a playable character in that particular game, but uh, a short, sweet cameo is there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, hey, I got paid, right? <laughs> and it's a franchise, so you don't know if you'll appear again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, hopefully, some some more things will be coming out in the next year or two that uh, that Big can be a part of. Oh, that would be really cool. Too bad he wasn't in colors though, because that was actually a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, just the DS version, I guess. But um, Or am I thinking of something else? <laughs> I don't know. Am I getting um, all the Sonic titles? There's the Sonic Freeriders for the Kinect that I heard right. was horrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that, yeah. I have a Kinect, but I didn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. I've heard nothing but bad things. Um, but, yeah, there's obviously the Wii sonic uh colors and mm -hmm. then there's the ds one which uh you know i i always rely on the fans to kind of let me know <laughs> it's like hey i heard you on so and so and then i go oh really that's what i'm on cool thanks for clarifying because i was like um putting that i was on an, another title entirely and then and they said no you're not on this it's only these characters and then someone else goes oh i picked up a ds and you're on that like and here's a link to youtube with samples it's like hey even better woo <laughs> That's really cool. What are you playing on your Kinect, just out of curiosity? Uh, right now, I only have two games, and other than the Adventures, which comes with it, I have uh, Dance Central and Don't Laugh, <laughs> Your Shape, Fitness Evolved. <laughs> have you already felt your muscles getting a little bit bigger? <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I, it's not about you know weight training. It's about you know toning and doing cardio and all that. And you do feel the burn. I have to say. You know, it's nice, you know, when you're moving, obviously the avatar thing is, is kind of working. It's it's magic there, and, you know, you're within the game, and uh, it's keeping an eye on, you know, if you're lifting your legs and your arms up high enough and uh, and all that. And, yeah, you can work up a sweat pretty easily. You stick to that, and it shows you, like, a calorie counter and, you know, how much you're burning and a 20-minute workout and whatnot. It, it's actually very, very helpful. It's nice to not have to leave the house, and unlike the Wii or the PlayStation Move, it's really nice not to have a to hold a controller. Mm -hmm. And I heard Dance Central was was really active too. I, I've seen clips of it, and I, I was watching some earlier on like the hard setting. And I'm like, wow, that that's I couldn't do that. I'm just not even gonna try. 
Yeah, I wasn't even going to get a Connect, and then I went to a con uh, in uh, Boise, Idaho, in November, and uh, Chris Rager, who voices Hercule or Mr. Satan on DBZ Kai, uh, he says, "Dude, I challenge you." It's like, really? Okay. And then I beat him, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, this is intensely fun. I mean, I was never into DDR because I suck at that, but um, something about Dan Central was just like, man, you get you get a good workout. It's a lot of fun. You know, great music on there. And uh, I'm really excited to see, you know, where the Kinect goes this spring, where, you know, you'll be able to to move and your mouth movements will move in sync with your avatar on screen. It can hold video chats and record the clips and, you know, send them to Facebook and whatnot. And I think we're going to see podcasting taken to a new level. Oh, that'll be very interesting. And I know specifically, I, I remember my producer mentioned this beforehand, and I remember you tweeting about it. You actually got to be practically every male character in a video game that came out recently. Yes, X-Men Arcade. They brought this classic, uh, dusted it off, gave it a little HD shine and uh, a fresh soundtrack. Uh, in, in the old days, they had one actor do all the voices. And for whatever reason, they said, you know, we got to keep this uh, nostalgic. So we're keeping the dialogue exactly the same with like, welcome to die and <laughs> all that uh, horrific grammar. Uh, but uh, they decided to update the the audio I tried out, got lucky, and Marvel said, we want you. And it's like, you got me. <laughs> Very cool. That, so. that must be kind of a challenge to be able to voice everybody in a game because you have to make each voice just a little bit different. Right? I try to. Uh, when I was playing the game, I kind of noticed that there is a sameness to it. But, I mean, that's, again, that's part of the charm of the old school game is, uh, you know, hearing everyone and uh, there, there's very little differentiation and uh, I said, you know, I can make these voices totally unique if you want. It's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Really, what you're doing is fine. It's like, okay. So uh, I gave him that, and uh, it, it's been a lot of fun playing that game, especially online multiplayer. You can just, you know, unlock some, some pretty unique achievements. <laughs> well, I think that's cool in itself that, you know, you actually play the games afterwards or you try and keep track of them because, you know, there's so many projects you're working on, you know, a year later, you're like, was I in that? Now I can't remember. Exactly. And a lot of the times I don't get copies of the game. You know, you know, we're, we're paid to record that one time session fee or whatnot. And then uh, it goes out into the ether. And, uh, you know, whenever the games come out, they come out in the anime and the cartoons and that all comes out. But we're still kind of in the ether swirling around going, when's our next audition? When's our next session? It's just a constant, you know, um, uh, factory almost it's like right get out assembly line boom 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 next project boom 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 next project boom boom i was on that awesome that boom 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 next project you know <laughs> i i have to wonder because i i've gotten the chance to you know to speak with voice actors new and old you know do you think that affects the the overall performance or or do you think it's it's a benefit to get it out that fast uh, well, time is money, and uh, you can only do what you can within those time constraints. Um, luckily, I keep getting called back, so I guess they trust my ability. And um, so, the, I mean, I, I'm glad about that. In a perfect world, yeah, I wish, I wish, like for games and anime, we could take a little more time, you know, uh, tweak the performance in, instead of, you know, maybe sometimes taking a, a take of a line and just going, you know, that's good enough. Let's move on. It's like, well, no, let's go back. Let's really make it work. Let's hear it in the context. If the other actors recorded it in, in the scene, let's play it back and do that. But, you know, fortunately, it bogs it down. And, you know, time is money and everyone wants to, you know, get to lunch or get to dinner and, and just get it done, uh, you know, on time and under budget. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, at least in the, in the gaming world, you're seeing a whole new rise in, uh, in, in making the actors more a part of it with motion capture. You know, doing the whole avatar thing where you're just dressing up in those skin tight costumes with, you know, ping pong balls all over you. And uh, they're, they're taping those performances. So the actors actually are suddenly a, on camera in a, in a way. I mean, they eventually I mean, their performances are the basis for the animation and uh, a lot of my cohorts have gotten to do that, and I'm quite envious. I'm, I'm hoping I can, I can do that. that. That's really taking voice acting to the next level and, 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 and making it like a hybrid between stage acting and on camera. You know? And that's really interesting because you can kind of you know, compare and con contrast against you know, animated projects or anime, for instance, because it doesn't have that. 
Yeah, it doesn't have that. I mean, the thing about voice acting is you're building a performance solely with your voice. That was uh, the allure and... Uh, you know, the, the that was one of the the great popularity things about radio back in the days. You didn't have TV. You know, not everyone could get out to the movies. You certainly didn't have Internet. So people would gather around their radios on at such and such time every whatever night of the week and tune in and listen to their favorite cast perform these live shows. And then those guys went on to become TV's first stars. And uh, that that's always been very intriguing to me. That's why I grew up wanting to do two things, be on the radio and do voice acting, because I just love creating theater of the mind. Well, hopefully we're gathering enough listeners here while you're on. Come, hey, I hope so. Come. I tweeted about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when you post the uh, the uh, the uh, on demand version, you know, we'll 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 pimp some listeners there, too. Oh, definitely. We will totally let you know. And I'm curious, because I know we, we don't have a ton of time. Where can we stalk you in real life? Where can you stalk me? Oh, my gosh. I'm going all over the place this year in terms of conventions. In fact, you guys have an ad banner for my next appearance. For uh, Comic-Con. Com- Comic-Con. And when I say that and people just hear the word, they think, uh, communism? What? You're a commie? <laughs> no, no, commie. K-A-M-I. February 19th and 20th in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And here's something I didn't know. I was reading the ad banner. It says free admission. Wow. Yeah. You know, you, you I, I don't get a free con. That, that's what it says on their site. So we we put it in the banner. But we'll be, I, I, not me specifically, but um, Kibbs and DS, who's a DJ and the other co-owner, respectively, will be uh, appearing at the convention and doing live broadcasting. So if you want to stop by and say hi, we'll we'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, I just clicked on the site. I see you on the guest list, and uh, that's quite a nice lineup there. Little Karibo, Micah Solosad, um, J- Johnny Bosch. Man, it's it's, it's going to be a, a fun show in the Deep South there. Are there any other shows you're appearing at? Oh, all over. I recently updated my site because uh, I've just been you – know, the calendar's been filling up. I'm actually going to uh, Sydney, Australia and Adelaide, New Zealand in February and early March uh, to Armageddon Expo, February 26th and 27th. Anime Matsuri in Houston, March 18th through 20th. Anime Detour, April 1st through 3rd in Bloomington, Minnesota. I mean, there's, there's other things on the list, too. MechaCon in New Orleans, Tokyo and Tulsa, Akon in Dallas, Dragon Con in Atlanta. Hawaii Entertainment Expo. I've got the dates and all the links on my site at KyleABear.com. Well, you're definitely going to be busy this year, but it's kind of sad for me that when you said Australia, all I could think about is the flooding. I hope the flooding's cleared by then. Oh, man. Yeah, seriously. Uh, isn't it their summertime there? I mean, their seasons are like flip-flop with ours. Well, we but. actually we actually have two uh, two staff who are from Australia. One's in Cle- uh, Queensland, and 75% of his state is... is pretty much under right now and he can't dj because obviously he, he can't get on the internet he's kind of stuck where he is so oh I'm man kind of concerned uh hope, hoping that uh, that gets better for them i i heard uh after they were flooded you know another natural disaster happened and now i can't remember what it was but they're not having good luck oh that's that, that's a shame yeah I, I hope it clears up i mean if we're gonna you got to sit on a plane for like 13, 14, 15 hours to, to make it there. And like, oh, the con is canceled. What do we do? Well, we can't really do much of anything. <laughs> you know, it's like get in a boat. <laughs> That'll be the next convention fad on boats. They, I mean, they should do that. You know, we've uh, and I don't know if someone's tried to before, but, you know, do like a, a, a an anime convention slash cruise. Uh, you know, that may be prohibitively expensive. Your average anime fan does not have a lot of disposable income. But, um, man, can you imagine how cool that would be? That would be really cool. I, I, It would be just so much fun. You could see different places, too, if it was, yeah. like, a really expensive cruise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other, other than The other downside besides the cost, I guess, would be, like, if people get seasick <laughs> and stuff. Right. Oh, yeah, that's not the fun part. <laughs> oh, yeah, not so much. <laughs> now, I am curious, is there any place for our listeners who aren't as familiar with you, uh, it, where can they, like, stalk you on the interwebs? Like, your website, the social media thing? Sure, absolutely. I'm on all over our Twitter and Facebook on a daily basis. My Facebook fan page is facebook.com slash KyleAbearVO. I'm always posting, you know, silly links, funny link things that I find interesting or geeky and whatnot. And that links to my Twitter account. So if you follow me on one, you're going to 
typically see the same post kind of repost on, on Facebook, but twitter.com slash Kyle A. Bear. And uh, my appearances and information about my private Skype voiceover workouts I have on KyleAbear.com. That's a chance for people who are interested uh, in getting into voice acting to, to see what it's like, what expectations are placed upon the actors in the booth. So you can kind of get a little bit of a, a sense of like, okay, uh, what do I have to do? Here's my script. Study it, read, perform. Oh, gosh. Oh, pressure, pressure. Uh, and then listen to the director, take some tweaks, take some notes, and then uh, do another take. And then I kind of give feedback, point out your strengths and things you need to work on. And always encourage that uh, voice actors, uh, like you know anybody else in any profession, you need to get proper training. And uh, I'm not a shortcut into that by any means. I don't profess to be a, a guru or a fast end of the industry, but um, – I can use my experience and time in doing this. You know, I've been doing it, you know, start on DBZ 10 years ago. I can certainly share aspects of the industry and answer questions and, of course, you know, help people decide if voice acting is the right path for them. Uh, I think they see the, the, the shiny, happy, uh, popular side of it uh, at the anime conventions. You come to the panel, it's like, you're on all these shows. You must be drowning in money. Like, <laughs> no, not so much. I've never been more broke. But you know what? I'm drowning in the wealth of uh, my soul being happy, you know, because I'm doing something I love. Definitely. And that, that I think, is the most important thing, is to do something you really enjoy. Because if it gets to where you're coming home from work and you're depressed or you, you don't like what you're doing, it just everything kind of sucks. <laughs> It does, and then you start posting emo things on social media, and they start hiding your feed because they're really sick of your, <laughs> of your, like, oh, woe is me. Let's throw a pity party. Oh, pack your bags. We're going on a guilt trip. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to say to the listeners out there? Well, I want to thank you guys for, uh, you know, approaching me and, and letting me come on here and, and talk about my stuff and my projects and the appearances and everything. I really, really appreciate the fans for, of course, supporting anime in the first place. It's such a beautiful art form and. And uh, remember, it is a business, and businesses cost money to sustain. So if you're going to download a show, uh, just keep in mind that uh, you know there's no money going back into the system unless you're getting it through an official source. Um, Funimation, Viz, iTunes, the PSN, Xbox Live, that sort of thing. If you're just going to torrent everything or watch fan subs, uh, that's unfortunately having a very negative side effect on the industry. So so please be considerate of the artists and craftsmen who spent their, their time and energy and money to bring you the shows, the stories, the characters uh, that you love and celebrate and cosplay as. Uh, this is a beautiful art form. We don't want to see it go away. So please, you know, uh, you know, you can't walk into a restaurant and expect free food. You got to spend money. If there's something you want to buy, you want to buy a new HD TV, you got to save money for it. So um, let's save your money, go to the conventions, enjoy uh, the community that's there, the supportive fans. And I'm very, very appreciative of everybody who's who's uh, been there and um, enjoyed the stuff that I've gotten to do. Definitely. Thank you for saying that, too. I think it always makes more of an impact when, you know, the voice actors say it and, and not me. <laughs> I mean, the cynicals and the cynical types and the critics will say, oh, you're just looking out for your job. But you know what? I'll still have work to do if anime truly went away. Uh, most of my income is actually from video games, and video game projects pay more, and uh, they flourish despite the bad economy. But I don't want to see anime go away. I am a fan. I'm not as hardcore as some other people, but you know, I grew up watching stuff ever since the 70s with Speed Racer. I, I love anime. I, I want to see it flourish. Definitely. And once again, I have to thank you. It's it's so nice to be able to sit down with you again. I think this is like our third fourth interview but it's always a pleasure thank you thank you anytime you guys want to have me we can just talk about you know geek stuff we don't have to sit here and say kyle promote your stuff like no no, no I'll, <laughs> I'll be happy to you know be a, a guest on whatever stuff if you want to talk about you know because I, I i you know i could go on all day about you know games and movies and comics and all sorts of things Definitely. And for everybody out there, if you missed any of this interview, don't worry. It'll be posted up on the website. Or you can follow our Twitter, or perhaps Kyle's, assuming he will promote it, and you'll find out when it's posted. You know I'll promote it. I'm all about the promotion. All right. Thanks, everybody. Keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.